Okay, folks, here we have a 2001 Fat Boy Harley Davidson gas tank. And would you believe me that if I told you all of this hand airbrushed work eventually started out once upon a time just like this, covered in all these stencils and magnets? Well, today we're going to show you a little bit about what that process takes going forward. One of this side is dedicated to the current troops that are fighting for this nation. With the Palmaya flag, and you are not forgotten, ghosted in there. And we obviously have our Marine. And <clears throat> the Eagle is kind of protecting everything and looking over everything, and that's kind of what we also have going on the other side. However, the other side is going to be dedicated to World War II veterans. So stay tuned and see how we make that become a reality. So as you can see in the previous pictures that I started with just stenciling out my work. I took two hours and stenciled out everything just with paper so I can get nice clean lines when I'm airbrushing and to prevent any overspray. I also have this plastic wrap around over the tank, um, just protecting the other side because the other side is complete at this time and I don't want to get any of that paint on that side. So this just serves as a protection. I also start with um, degreasing the surface. You really, really, really want to make sure that you have a nice clean surface for the paint to uh, grab onto. It's important and crucial um, to have a, a proper adhesion for the paint. You want to remove all that grease from your fingertips. You just touching and putting all these magnets down and everything and touching that surface, you're leaving a residue and you need to get rid of that oily residue. I just use this Prep All Wax and Grease Remover. Works really well. Um, once you have a nice clean surface, all I did was I started with the furthermost background pieces. You want to work from the background to the front. So I just went in and took about a half hour and ghosted in some sky and this halo effect was just created with some white, <coughs> excuse me, and then some green, some candy organic green over it. Now I really like to use House of Color products. House of Color makes some amazing colors from pearls to metallics, uh, even to neons. Uh, they're really great with anything they do. Um, and basically I'm going to go and show you what it takes to start the eagle and some of the process of uh, the airbrushing and hand painting. For my airbrush, for my airbrush I love to use the Iwata series. Really anything from Iwata is awesome. I started out with the Iwata Eclipse series. Uh, which actually coincidentally is my logo tattooed on my arm. <laughs> um, but it's a great little gun with a little cup and <clears throat> it it really works good for any little small details and what you're trying to do from a thin little line to as wide as like, you know, shading in the sky like I did. Um, but the High Performance Plus is my go-to now. I have never turn back when I started with this airbrush and the detail that you can achieve is amazing. Um, <clears throat> it's called the HPC Plus by Iwata and I absolutely love it. I am lefty so <laughs> uh, I enjoy using this one because it's a lot more comfy for me being lefty and it also has a very nice rest on the bottom so it doesn't dig into your hand after a while. I just have my uh, airbrushes set up with a quick disconnect. It's really nice. Iwata makes these as well. Um, and it's just really quick. It's really easy. You don't lose any air pressure or anything. And now when you're brushing, you're generally at a very low pressure anyway, about 15 to 20 PSI, and it really varies on the kinds of paint you use. So, but <clears throat> I have my regulator as well, so I can turn up and down my pressure as I need. But enough of the babbling here. We're gonna get in and show you some of the work on what it takes. So, to begin, I have removed the furthermost part, which is the wing back here, and that's what we're going to be working on. I'm going to show you guys a little bit about the uh, feather process, what that takes to make realistic feathers, and um, the fur process is also very similar. So, I just have my magnets holding on, uh, keeping this covered again, clean, nice stencil, uh, <clears throat> and all this white I went in and drew out to get a sense of 
where I'm going to be airbrushing, I just used a white Stabilo pencil. It's basically a um, wax colored pencil and it is water soluble and you can just wipe it off and it works really well to get an idea of where you want to go from here. So I'm going to go in and start with the airbrush with a uh, House of Color 50-50 uh, mix of their Brindle Brown and Imitation Gold um, beautiful colors and it makes a very nice color for the a base color for the wing and that's what we're going to start with. Generally you want to work from dark to light so I already kind of have a dark background so I just want to add some color but I don't want to destroy all of my dark so I'm going to shade and what I want to do is have this eagle basically be a protector so I want to fade the wing down into the sky like it's turning into the background and turning into the picture so uh, a lot of colors are generally reduced about two to one two parts paint one part reducer that's what I have between this brindle brown and imitation gold and I'm just using a uh, medium reducer RU311 again house of color product great product go in test my line we're gonna go from there and we're just gonna start building all that color and building uh, from light to dark basically. I don't want to hit the tripod here so be a little careful. And again working at a really low PSI but all these wings, these feathers are going to overlap so I want to keep the right side light but the left side dark create that source of illusion and uh, layering in the wing. So just one by one, we're going to go in and drop some color. This is my compressor kicking on. I use the uh, I want a jet compressor. Quiet, nice, only kicks on for a few seconds, doesn't really disturb you in what you're doing. So. And again, the farther away you get, the more shadowed it's going to be, and we're getting closer to the eagle's head now, so that's going to be shadowed. So we really just want to give like an indication of the wing disappearing behind his head. And we can go in and fluff that up, continuing onwards. So this is just the first step of many, and it's really, uh, really quite the process, but once you get the hang of it, it really is amazing what you can do. <clears throat> and I'm going to start to work my way up, and really start to pop some of these feathers out. And notice that I use both of my hands to support myself and get a nice even smooth line and I'm very slowly building that color to get the desired effect of what I want because again in here I haven't killed all those darks so you can see where that overlapping is going to take place and where that shadow is going to get dropped so we really want to focus on where the light's coming from and in this case the light will be coming down so we want this eagle to look strong, proud, and a uh, very big protector of these troops. It really is an honor to be able to do something like this. It's really cool to be able to support troops and show them, you know, that what they're doing really matters. And that there's people who stand behind them. This is actually uh, dedicated to a ride that I will be doing on June 25th. Um, it's called We Ride So They Fly and it's a part of the American uh, Honor Flight Society basically I believe it's called. And when World War II veterans pass and Korean vets, uh, all the proceeds go to transporting them to the Arlington Cemetery in DC. So uh, really important cause, really good cause and this tank is going to be raffled off uh, to support that cause. So that's going to be really cool. Um, 
often you will see me pull away, um, like I just did to clean the tip of my airbrush. These airbrushes generally have a, um, a cover that you can screw on. I take the cover off so I can access the needle because a lot of the paint will build up. And I just take some reducer, or I'll dip it in reducer, and I'll just take a towel and clean it off to keep, so I can get a nice precise line when I'm airbrushing. But I think you guys get the idea of building these layers. Now, once we build up our layers, we're going to go in and start with our hard outline. And the point of the hard outline is to really give it that pop. And it uh, deciphers between a lot of different artists, and my style is very bold. Every artist has a different style. Uh, I love to have nice, bold features, so when you're looking at something, it's not fuzzy, and all the detail is very clear. So, we're going to show you that next step. And we go in with the uh, Vondego pinstriping brushes, which are made uh, by MAC as well. But Vondego has an awesome line of pinstriping brushes that I love to use. Very good for detail. I use the Autograph brush. It's teeny tiny. I'll show you that in a little bit. But see, we're starting to build all these layers, and you can see how it's already starting to get that 3D feel. Now in here it's going to be very shadowed so we just want to give it a little bit of indication. And again I have all my stencils. These are just magnets. I love working on a tank because <clears throat> you can use the excuse me <clears throat> use the magnets to hold the paper and it works really well. So now we're going to start that fade and we're just going to bring this brown and get rid of some of the stabilo so this won't show. Like I said water soluble so it can just fade away. Um, and we're really going to bring that wing down like it's disappearing into the background and we're going to do that all the way down. So start and just kind of give that effect and then we can go in with the paintbrush and really create the effects of that wing fading into the background and disappearing. Now I just want to drop some color for that, and that's that. But we're going to go continue and do all of this, and then the next stage we're going to go in with the black outline and outline everything that we did in the Stabilo, and then add highlights, and show you the final product. Okay, now that we have all our brown laid down, and we have that indication of those light and darks and generally about where we want to go about the wing is going to be located. We're going to start and go in and hand paint uh, our hard outline with some very dark brown, almost black. Like I said, I go in with uh, the Mac Fondego brush, autograph, very very fine as you can see. Uh, now I keep it coated in uh, a preservative oil uh, that is absolutely awesome. Also made by Vondego's Pro Series uh, pinstriping brushes. And <clears throat> every time you're done using the brush, you coat it in it, and you basically create, you know, your nice point. And anytime you want to use it, you just wash it in reducer or soap and water, and you'll be ready to go. Just helps keep those bristles maintained really well and nice. So I'm gonna go in and reduce some black, and you want to pull a really nice line. Make sure you load up your brush. And the more reducer you add, the more it's going to flow, but also the more transparent you're going to make your paint. So depending on how hard of an outline or how soft of an outline you want, you can reduce the paint even more. Uh, but right now we're kind of going to go in with pretty, pretty hard detailing. We're going to start right above the head. And this part, definitely a little more tedious. But you can see we can pull a nice thin line or a thick line. And I'll generally come in and stabilize myself with my other hand sometimes. And we're just going to individually go in one by one and do all those feathers. And every time I disappear from the camera that's me, uh, dipping my brush in some more reducer. Make sure that paint stays nice and thin on that brush so I can get a nice 
clean stroke and you don't have to press very hard at all no pressure and the less pressure you give the uh, thinner your line will be so we're just gonna go in and take some time one by one start again dark to light now that we have our mid-tone start to really bring some of this out and layer by layer and moving right along now that we have all our indications of our quills and where our feathers are really gonna be now we're gonna go in with uh, another mid-tone right before the highlight and this is just straight imitation gold to really bring out and pop where those feathers really overlap each other. So we're gonna start with that. Again, a little more tedious and with the uh, pinstripe brush, but thin out that paint nice and get a nice indication of some ruffles in the feathers and some lines going. And it's really an interesting process, but the final product is so worth it in the end. So, and we're just gonna go around in here and start to get that, uh, indication of where those really pop out. So we're going to do the same that we did. And then if I add more reducer to this paint, it'll actually like start to blend with some of this brown as well. And the more I push, the thicker my line's going to be. So then I'll go in with the airbrush and soften this, which means basically the airbrush is used a lot in smaller fine details to help blend this sharp transition between this dark brown and this light brown. And I'm just going to go in with that 50-50 uh, mix I had of the brindle brown and imitation gold. Um, but we can start to get some like indications of creases and maybe some feathers that are missing on this eagle or really just individualize each feather and make it stand out. One by one. So I like for uh, when I do highlights making my paint a little more <clears throat> reduced like I said so it helps blend and maybe not be as sharp because uh, the more reducer that you do have in there or it's going to be. And Again I love this Von Diego brush because it's almost like a colored pencil when you get the paint nice and gooey and wet on there. You can just kind of scribble your marks in wherever you want them. And also the more reducer that you use, the lighter the paint is going to be when it dries. You can see how thick this is here because I just laid this down. Over here it's already starting to dry so it's fading and blending. Uh, it's really playing around with the reducer and how much you like to uh, have your paint run or some people like their paint thick but I like it thin so I don't have to stress and I can load up those bristles and get a nice pull with it and we'll also go in the final step will be with the airbrush with some dark brown or black to push back the feathers like underneath each layer <clears throat> we'll go in and start to push those back with the airbrush once we put in all our little highlights and indications here now that I have gone in and done all my hand painting I have gone in and outlined everything with the black and then I have come in and added some more of that mid-tone of that brindle brown and imitation gold to fade it back and get it soft to look like actual feathers and then I went around all the edges and added some highlights so everything pops now I just need to add the shadow and we're gonna go in all through here and really push that back and all these layers underneath and you're gonna see how all that's gonna come forward and that'll finish the seal wing up we're going in with a dark brown, basically uh, almost black, and we're going to start <clears throat> at the bottom and work our way up. So, turn the 
air pressure down a little bit. And we're gonna slowly build that black on the bottom and really fan this out. Really dark inside where it meets the eagle. I don't think I'm in the shot right now, so bear with me. Work on over. That's pretty much all in shadow, so that'll go. But now you can see how we have that illusion that the wing is fading down now into the scene. So we have that, and we're going to add a little bit more. Maybe that's a little too much, but you get the idea. Continue. Drag that down. And we're going to go now into all of the individual feathers themselves and start to uh, layer that up. Alright folks, thanks for tuning in and learning a little bit about airbrushing today. Hope you guys hit the subscribe button and definitely stay tuned for more. Again, this is Danielle Klavik with Danielle's Airbrushing. Thanks for tuning in.